we want to look at the definition of factoring as it applies to polynomials. So we'll get right down to it to factor a polynomial is to write it as a product. In other words, a product means write it as multiplication. Okay, so let's let's look at some examples here of some polynomials. So here we can see that we have three different polynomials and each polynomial is written in two different ways. For example, we have 2x squared plus x. That's also the same thing as x times the quantity 2x plus 1. Those two th quantities are equal. Those two polynomials are equal. But the polynomial on the left is not multiplication. It is addition. So the polynomial on the left here is what we call simplified, meaning there are no parentheses. Like terms are combined. OK, now over here on the right side, however, you notice that this is x times 2x plus 1. It's a product. It's a multiplication. So this polynomial on the right side is called factored. It's a multiplication. All right. And as we move through the other examples, you can see that 5x squared minus 7x minus 6 is simplified as well. You cannot combine any like terms. There's nothing left to multiply together. It's simplified. However, it can be written as 5x plus 3 times the quantity x minus 2. It's two things multiplied, so it's also a product, which means it's factored. And you can check by multiplying this out that you do get 5x squared minus 7x minus 6. To multiply it out, you simply distribute every term here to every other term and combine. So they are, in fact, equal, but they're two different forms. It looks different on each side of the equation. The third one is the same story. The only difference here is the right side is three things multiplied. That is still factored because it's a product. It's multiplication. And if you wanted to check to see that the right side here equals the left side, then you've got a couple different ways of doing it. Since it's, you've got all multiplication, three things multiplied, Multiply any two things you want first, and then take the result of that times the other piece. So for example, uh, you could distribute your 6 here and get 6x plus 12. And then you would take that times x minus 2, and you would distribute here. So that's one way to do it. You could also multiply the x plus 2 times the x minus 2 first, and then Whatever you get from that, multiply your 6 through it. In either case, you will get 6x squared minus 24 as your simplified version. So to factor something means to write it as a product. And when you learn to factor, you'll see how, how in the world do you take the simplified version and get the factored version, or get take this simplified version and get that factored version, which is an interesting question. And similarly for the third one. So we're going to work on factoring, which means turning simplified polynomials into factored polynomials. Now, what's the use for factoring? Factoring has uses um, in solving various types of equations and in working with fractions. OK, um, it's useful in working with fractions. Now, the reason it's useful in working with fractions is because fractions are division, right? Fractions are division. Anytime you see a fraction, such as 2 
over 3, the fraction bar means division. Okay, And what does factoring do? Factoring creates multiplication. Well, the good news about multiplication and division is they work nicely together. So if you have fractions, which are division, oftentimes creating multiplication is a useful thing to do. Now, one other thing is um, factoring can be very difficult. Now, we're going to look at techniques that are pretty simple and that we know. Uh, but factoring in general is a pretty difficult process. Um, for this reason, factoring on a higher level, of course, on a much higher level, can be used to encrypt data. So when you, when you enter your credit card number on the internet and you don't have to worry about uh, someone getting that number and doing something with it, it's because um, some forms of encryption use factoring uh, to encrypt the data. All right, so what do I mean by factoring can be very difficult? Let's go back up to these examples. If we take any of these examples, these polynomials each have two different forms. If I wanted to start with this polynomial here, the factored form, and try to get the simplified form, well, that's pretty simple. I just distribute my x. But if I start with my simplified form and want to get my factored form, that's a little harder. And some of you may know how to do that already. If not, that's fine. Now, look at the second example, however. Going from the factored form to the simplified form, again, is pretty simple. You just multiply it all out. But starting with the simplified form and getting the factored form, that's a bit more of a mystery. So factoring is a rather difficult process. And so it actually has real world uses. Now, it's on a much higher level, so we won't get to that. But just so you know, it is useful.